everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small and today I'm just going to do a quick video uh, talking about uh, Flames of War unit. This is probably going to be a new kind of series that we'll be doing on the channel just looking at one specific unit um, in Flames of War and kind of going um, in a little bit more depth than we would normally when we're reviewing a, a intelligence briefing or something like that. So uh, I thought I would start with perhaps my favorite unit in all of Flames of War and that is the humble Sherman tank. The M4 medium tank aka Sherman is the most iconic and common American tank of World War II with a total of more than 44,000 produced. By 1944 the tank was showing its age but this didn't stop tankers from adding modifications and upgrades to help them fight on. And that's from the D-Day American source book. So the Sherman tank, um, it's available in mid-war. This video, we're not gonna be talking about the mid-war variant, um, which is the same tank as the basic Sherman, but it's a lot more powerful because it's, its competitors are not as powerful as what the Germans can later field, like Panthers and King Tigers and all that good stuff. But the Sherman tank. So this is a uh, just a basic Sherman tank. Um, let me zoom out here. We can talk about this card and the tank. Now the tank itself is um, it's it's interesting. I mean, it's the basic tank. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is, was one of the baselines that they they built the game around was the Sherman tank. Um, it's got a front armor of six, a side armor of four, and a top armor of one, which is uh, pretty common for a medium tank. There'll be some fluctuation in that range, but most tanks are fives, sixes, or, or sevens if they're in the medium tank range. It's only later when you get into the Germans or, or the Russian heavy tanks where it starts to get higher than that. Um, the speed is uh, tactical, can go 10 inches in terrain dash 12 inches, cross country dash 18, and road dash 20. It can also cross on a three plus. Um, the weapons, it has a 75 millimeter gun, at least this basic version, it, which gives it two shots, uh, whether it's moving or halted. Uh, Anti-tank 10 and a three plus firepower. Um, it also, uh, the, that gun has smoke and stabilizer, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, the n other nice thing about the Sherman is it's covered in machine guns. So it's got um, a 50 cal machine gun and some 30 cal machine guns. So you see those, those are just called the MGs here, but they're, they're 30 caliber. Um, which if the tank is standing still has a rate of fire of three shots from the 50 cal and two shots from the uh, 30 cal. Uh, moving the uh, 50 cal goes down in rate of fire um, which is uh, understandable and a, a cool um, addition here. Um, another thing to point out is the uh, Sherman 75 millimeter gun goes out to 28 inches, which is different from the previous version of Flames of War, which I believe it went out to 32 inches. So it's a little bit shorter range than it used to be, uh, but 28 inches there. Um, on that main gun, it does have a, um, like I said, anti-tank 10, which is very common for a um, medium type tank. Um, you're gonna see any 75 millimeter caliber somewhere around those. There are exceptions like the, the Panther's gun and things like that, but um, it's a respectable anti-tank of 10. Um, I always like to consider if, if Sherman is shooting at itself, or another Sherman, I should say, um, the anti-tank of 10 versus the front armor of six, um, you know, you're gonna have to roll at least a four on a, a, a D6 to equal or a five or higher to bounce that shot. So, um, you know, the, this gun is penetrating a Sherman 50% of the time. Um, smoke lets it shoot a smoke round. So it puts a two inch puff of smoke um, on its target and stabilizer is kind of cool. That's an American um, rule, which basically lets it shoot both shots um, of the main gun while it's moving. Most other folks, um, the moving rate of fire of a big gun like that is just one. So normally it's like two when halted, one shot when, or sorry, two when halted, one shot when moving. 
The Sherman with its stabilizer can shoot just as fast on the move, but there is a penalty with that. It is a minus one to hit. So if you need a five up to hit a long range tank, um, you're gonna need a six up using your stabilizers. But you're rolling two dice instead of one. Um, I always like those odds. What's interesting and different for those veterans of version three is stabilizer is no longer an optional rule. In previous versions, you could use it or not. Um, in this game, you have to um, always use the stabilizer when you're moving and firing your main gun. Um, so that is um, kind of an important distinction and something you'll see if you watch my old battle reports that uh, I, uh, it took me a while to remember. Um, and the version three bias always shows up. And then on the back side here, um, just to kind of go over the, the cost, three Shermans is 13 points. Um, so they're like, you know, pretty, pretty cheap. Like four, what is that? 4.3 points per, per tank. Um, and it has the self-defense AA, which is the machine guns. And you can see there that um, it lets you shoot at a rate of fire of one at an aircraft. So the, um, you know, the Sherman has some protection against aircraft. Not that you're going to see a lot of uh, uh, German aircraft in the game. And of course, those points that I'm talking about are for um, D-Day, the D-Day book. There are some upgrades you can take for um, your Sherman tanks in the D-Day book. Um, one of them, and I don't happen to have a model, at least I couldn't find it, um, is the hedgerow cutters. So these um, basically give you a, a cross of two plus instead of three plus uh, against hedges and bocage um, with this. And it's only one point and um, it's, it's not bad. Um, it's always, uh, you know, if you know you're playing on a bocage board or a board with heavy hedges, it's, it's cool to bring. If I was going to a tournament and, and didn't know what I was facing or what the boards look like, I, I wouldn't spend money on Cullen uh, hedgerow cutters. And it's, again, sorry, I don't have a, a model um, set up for that. Um, they also have sandbag armor, which is kind of cool, um, which basically gives it a... Um, a save against firepower um, five plus or six. So basically like uh, bazookas or panzer shreks. Um, basically, if you're hit by one of those, you roll a die and on a five plus you ignore it. Basically the sandbags uh, take it. Um, so the sandbag armor is kind of cool. I do have a platoon of those modeled up. Um, these guys are, um, that's the battlefront uh, sandbag kit. It was just a bunch of extra pieces of sandbag, which was kind of cool. And I do like the, uh, the look of that. So it's a way to buff up, a, uh, particularly if you're going to know you're going to be assaulting infantry that are going to be equipped with bazookas or panzerschrecks or something like that. Um, sandbag armor is pretty cool. Uh, next up is the Sherman DD. Um, basically, this is a, a, a unit upgrade. I, for the life of me, cannot find my Sherman DD tanks. If you saw my uh, D-Day uh, battle report with Jake, um, they're, they're in there. But basically, it's the floating Sherman model. Um, it uh, treats impassable water as difficult terrain, but the downside is um, the machine guns. You get less fire in the machine guns. Um, so, you know, it's blocked by the, the flotation skirt to the machine guns. Um, so it's kind of cool. Again, I apologize. I don't know where that, that model is. Um, then uh, you have perhaps one of my favorite Shermans, and that is the Sherman 76. Let's find that guy right here. The Sherman 76. Basically... Um, the hull is almost the same. It's the turret that's upgraded. And you can see the 76 versus the 75. The barrel is significantly longer. The turret is a lot bigger, particularly extended in the back. Um, and it brings a lot more firepower to your list. So the Sherman 76 um, is basically all the same stats we just talked about. 
right? Let me zoom out here again. However, it's uh, got a different main gun. It's got a different main gun than the stock or standard Sherman. Um, that main gun gives it its difference. It's uh, got a 36 inch range, which I believe is longer. I think in version three, it was 32, just like the standard Sherman. Um, again, the rate of fire is the same too, whether it's moving or halted, but the anti-tank is 12 and the firepower is three plus, which is the same. Um, and the notes are no HE and stabilizer. So no HE is significant um, because that means and if we flip it over here, we can see um, that you add one when you're shooting at infantry or guns. So the Sherman 76 is um, decidedly inferior going after dug-in infantry. I'm going to say dug-in infantry and dug-in guns. Um, out in the open, you use your machine guns, so you're, you're just as effective as our uh, bog standard Sherman. With the 76 millimeter gun at anti-tank 12, you are now threatening um, German heavy tanks like the Tiger, also the Panther. Both of those, I believe, have front armor 9. So um, a normal Sherman firing at one of those from the front, at best, at short range, can only bail it out uh, because front armor 9, the lowest they can roll is a 1 on their, their armor roll, equaling a 10 equals the anti-tank. So you're not penetrating with a normal Sherman from the front. The 76 millimeter gun gives us uh, that penetration. Now it's not the best. So, you know, a, a Tiger, for example, um, is only going to be penetrated on a one, two, and if they roll a three, they equal, and a four or higher, they bounce. So they're still bouncing uh, shells from this tank 50% of the time. However, they can't ignore it. You, the German player can no longer throw their their tank out in the open in front of a Sherman and just kind of laugh as your your you know rounds just bounce right right off the tank. Um, so the Sherman 76 opens it up. It is tough even, and then at long range, um, it's even harder. The, the the Tiger and the Panther can bounce those shots a little bit easier. So you need like a one to to equal. <laughs> they need to roll a one for you to penetrate and, and a two. Uh, to, to equal and a three or more to bounce it. Um, but the Sherman 76 uh, does give you that um, ability. Now, you can get the same kind of effect taking tank destroyers. Um, M10, uh, you know, tank destroyer platoon is in the D-Day book. Uh, later on, we should be getting Hellcats and uh, M36 Jacksons. Um, and those are a valuable tool in your toolbox. But if you like to run a Sherman company, and I like to do that occasionally, just run all Shermans um, without uh, an attached tank destroyer platoon, this is what threatens your, your uh, Germans. If they destroy these, you're in trouble. If uh, these can, can destroy them, um, you know, you're golden. So the Sherman 76 is pretty good. Now in uh, D-Day, anyway, you pay a premium for, for these. So three of these is 16 points. So that's a little over, that's what, 5.3 or so uh, points per Sherman 76. So it is more than the, um, the Sherman 75, but it's not that much more. Um, you are limited for the most part in taking just one platoon. I think there might be a way to take two um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, I think that's, if, particularly if you know you're going up against armor, um, the Sherman 76 is uh, a no-brainer. I wouldn't necessarily want to take all Sherman 76s because the no HE rule for the Sherman 76 um, does matter. I mean, it, it does impact uh, the game, particularly you know when you're trying to dig out 88s or any tank guns and things like that. Um, so a good mix of the two is, is recommended. Um, the other main version of the Sherman that you might see is, let's find him here, this fine fella. This is a uh, Sherman 105. So yes, this is a Sherman tank, but it's got more in common with a priest than it does um, its Sherman brothers. Um, really, it's a armored um, assault gun, self-propelled gun. 
Um, so again, it's got all the same stats. However, and I, I guess I should have pointed this out with the, the Sherman 76, is the front armor is increased by one. Um, it's seven. Uh, I forgot to mention the Sherman 76 also has a front armor of seven, which is um, really good. But let's talk more about this M105. Um, the so it has an M1 105 millimeter gun in the turret, so it actually um, is like a 105 millimeter artillery piece or priest. That's all the same gun. Um, in this case, it has a 48 inch range, uh, three uh, anti tank rating of three, three up firepower, and it can fire a smoke bombardment. Um, then you can also fire it in direct fire, 24 inches, um, which is um, pretty short. It's only one shot whether you are parked or not. Um, Anti-tank 9, 2 plus firepower, but it's brutal. Um, it's slow firing, so you're not going to be very successful firing it on the move. And uh, it can smoke. It can do smoke puffs. And it's got the same machine guns that every other Sherman has. Um, you know, these are um, kind of cool. They are um, expensive at like 4.5 points per tank. Uh, basically, I've only taken these when I try to run like a pure Sherman company, and I don't want to take, um, you know, 105, um, you know, leg artillery or priests. Um, you know, I want to be more themed. I think those are, are a, a better bang for your buck, uh, but this does have some application. Since this is front armor 7 and it does have a brutal gun, it can get into close range and with brutal um, you can force your enemy infantry and gun teams to re-roll their successful saves so a uh, um, you know two plus firepower plus re-rolling successful saves this is a great uh, vehicle for knocking out um, gun emplacements infantry and buildings things like that um, and then with front armor 7 staying relatively safe you know e even from uh, well you gotta still watch out for panzer shreks don't get that close uh, but still, it's it's a, a good tank. So um, probably the least seen variant of the Shermans, uh, but an important one to talk about. And again, this is you, you treat this differently than the other Shermans. Um, the the 105 is really again more like an artillery piece, an assault gun, whereas the 76 and the normal 75 are um, you can treat these uh, very similarly in how they're used um, on the battlefield. Now I also briefly wanted to touch on tactics for the Sherman tank um, because I've seen people use Sherman tanks and just have no luck at all. They hate them. They The front armor 6 or front armor 7 with the uh, Sherman 76, um, it just is not enough for them and um, they, they just don't have a good time. The, um, then I've seen the other extreme with where people, you know, wield these like a virtuosa and, uh, you know, just take apart their, their enemy. The nice thing is the Sherman tank um, is versatile. It can do a lot of things. Um, it's, not, it's not just one role in, in your army. Um, they've got infantry. Um, you've got a lot of 50 caliber machine guns. Uh, if they're dug in, um, if they're dug in. If they uh, have tanks, you've got the anti-tank 12 on your Sherman. Um, if they've got um, dug-in guns, you've got your 105. Um, the other ones can, can work too. Uh, 50 cals in numbers are surprisingly good at taking out um, infantry and dug-in gun teams. Um, they're pretty good. Um, one of my biggest um, pieces of advice I can give you with Shermans is... Um, to move with them, um, to not be static with them. Uh, American Shermans in particular, now British Shermans might be a little bit different and that might be a separate video entirely, but um, American Shermans have the stabilizer special rule and it's there for a reason. It's there um, to kind of promote or assist an aggressive play style. Your Sherman tanks um, can be moving. They can move and um, still have a decent rate of fire. They're not as penalized as almost any other tank um, when they're moving and firing their main guns. So you can 
um, you know, feel like you can move without sacrificing your direct firepower. Whereas if a Panzer IV, let's say, is moving, well, its rate of fire of its main guns cut in half, and that's just cut and dried. Not so with the Sherman. The Sherman can move and still fire with that stabilizer rule. Um, the other thing is the Shermans are um, inexpensive enough is that you have, if, if you are taking like a tank company, you can have a decent number of them. And that means that, you know, for every Tiger, you might have, uh, you know, three or four Shermans. Um, and just like in history, Shermans can deal with a uh, Tiger. Now, one of the, uh, the hardest things I've done is, is play, and when I've lost my Sherman 76s or I don't have them, and a Tiger hits the field. Um, uh, that Tiger has a front armor of nine, so I'm only ever bailing him out on the side uh, from the front. And he has an armor of eight on the side, so the German player has to roll a one on his armor check to fail. Uh, so very low odds, but even then, um, you know, Shermans can prevail. The fact that they have smoke means that they can smoke a target as they charge it. Um, the fact that they are pretty fast, they have a tactical of 10, um, means that they might be able to get to the sides. Um, now, Tigers are, like I said, one of the, the more dangerous opponents. Panthers are also dangerous. However, um, Panthers have a much weaker side, a side armor of 5. So if you can get around to the side of a Panther, um, even your, your standard Sherman is, is dangerous. I mean, the AT-10 versus a side armor 5, that's more than likely going to penetrate. And if you get your Sherman 76 around the side, it's going through without question. You, you can't bounce it. So the, um, the idea is being able to concentrate um, these, these forces, uh, being able to concentrate your number of Shermans. Um, if you just have a static line and you're firing um, at the Germans, um, unless you have overwhelming numbers, which means you're spending overwhelming points in that particular part of the battlefield, um, it's, it's hard to break even. When you consider something like a, a normal Sherman versus a Panzer IV, um, they both have the same front armor of 6. Uh, the Panzer IV has an anti-tank gun of 11. Um, so the odds are in any long-range engagement they're going to slowly start to, to come out ahead. That's not always the case, but um, it, it gives you an example. So what you want to look at is at the, um, the odds with these guys. Um, What's best? Usually sitting still and firing is not the best. Um, like I said, moving to the flanks, not giving um, the Germans the opportunity to, um, to counter everything. Um, when you have Shermans moving up on different sides of the board with different, um, uh, you know, with different targets that they're, they're going after, they can cross fire and, and it makes a lot of um, Germans nervous when they see Sherman start to charge. Um, some Germans are just used to the, the Shermans cowering in the back and waiting for you to, to come over there. Shermans don't need to cower. They can lay smoke. They can individually fire smoke. They can advance and they can get on those enemy's flanks. Um, so there you go. That's kind of my, my thoughts on the Sherman tank. My Sherman tanks are, again, some of my... Um, my favorite units in Flames of War, all of the different versions. I, I like running them all. Um, the plain old M4A1, the M4A176, and the M4A3 uh, 105mm. They're all uh, uh, cool tanks in the D-Day book and I guess in the late war um, uh, compilation book as well that they have. Um, so check it out. Um, from you guys, I'd like to hear if you have either one played with Shermans. Um, what are your thoughts tactically? How, how have you done with them? What do you find works? Um, if you've faced a lot of Shermans, you're a German player or someone like that, um, what have you found as successful counters to Shermans? Uh, do you, you know, are you not afraid of them or um, do they make you a little nervous? So there you go. I, I hope um, that this video is helpful. Please drop any questions down in the comments below. Um, I'd love to chat more about the Sherman tank. Um, if you kind of like this uh, video style, uh, also let me know. I, I do have some plans to do some more favorite units, and if you guys like this, I'll, 
I'll do even more. Um, it's something easy for me to do, especially while we're all in, in lockdown um, and still get some content out. So there you go, guys. There's the ubiquitous Sherman tank for Flames of War, the D-Day American book. As always, thanks for watching and keep on wargaming.